They came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles uh, that thou doest except God be with him. Verse 3 says, And Jesus answered and said, And very well said to you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Amen. Number 4 it says, And Nicodemus said to him, How can a man being born, uh, uh, being when he is old, enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Number 5, Jesus said, and answered, Very well said unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. Verse 8, the Bible says, the wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof. He says, thou canst not tell whence it is come, whither it goeth. And so everyone that is born of the spirit. Number 9, he says, Nicodemus answered and said unto him, how can these things be? And Jesus said, uh, unto him, art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Really, brother, I say unto ye, we, uh, we speak that we know and testify that we've seen. Ye receive not our witness. If I told you the earthly things, ye would believe not. How shall ye believe if I tell you heavenly things? No man can ascend up into heaven, but he that come down from heaven, even the Son of Man is, which is in heaven. Number 14 says, and Moses lifted up the serpent, in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And whosoever believeth in him shall not perish there, but have eternal life. Number 16, the most quoted verse, he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth not on him is condemned, but he that believeth not is is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. And this condemnation, last verse, this condemnation the, that light is coming to the world, men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. There's a lot in there. Go back and read John chapter 3. There's a lot in there. And then uh, the, the, just the other night, I kind of thought about this the other day. Reverend Johnson was preaching on something. I'm going to come out of Mark, Matthew 15, 27. She says, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat from the crumbs which fall from the master's table. And, J and Jesus said unto the woman, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto you even as thou wilt. And the daughter was made whole that very hour. It's two different stories, passages. But I want to use this about, uh, again, in, it is intended for everybody. God's love, God's salvation is intended for everybody. Amen. Reverend Joshua, open us in prayer, please. Amen. Father God, Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love, for your power. We thank you, Lord, for your presence, which has already been rich in this service. We ask you, Lord, to touch our pastor, unction him afresh from all high as he breaks the bread of life. Give us hearts, Father God, to receive of your word, but to not only be hearers of the word, but let us be doers of your word and respond as you challenge us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. One more time. Let's give the Lord praise. Amen. This morning, give the Lord glory this morning. Give the Lord all the honor that he is due. We serve a God that is more than able, amen, to meet every need in this house. Amen. It's good to be here this morning. And truly, truly, we are blessed by Almighty God. One of the most important uh, uh, quoted scriptures we said is John 3.16. You probably learned it in Sunday school. Continue to pray for our Sunday school. Amen. And our youth, no doubt, will continue to come and receive the word of God. I remember learning this as a kid. Learning this, this, this little memory verse as a kid, John 3, 16. And, and it really rung and, and really, that's really summing up what life is all about, what Jesus came to do. Uh, uh, it's intended for everything, everybody. And, and the second verses I read to you was a lady who had come to Jesus one time. My daughter was sick with devils. My daughter was sick and possessed with devils. And, and she had heard about Jesus was coming to, uh, and healed. And the Bible says that how that she uh, came to him, and she was uh, uh, not of Jewish descent, but and the Bible says they weren't even supposed to really have interaction with one another, and we'll get into that here in a minute. But uh, again, but she came to Jesus and said, Lord, can you help me also? She began to want to know, uh, uh, again, can you also help me? I see you helping uh, the, uh, the people of the Jew, the children of Israel, but can you also help me, one of the outsiders? Amen. And no doubt we begin to see that this verse of scripture, uh, this occasion, this account, was a foreshadow of what was to come to pass. Amen. 
It was a foreshadow of how Jesus not only was going to come for just that one people, set of people, but he's going to come for all men and all nations today. Amen. Give God glory this morning. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, that how does she realize this? And so uh, Jesus began to have an interchange with her and said, hey, don't you know that this, uh, uh, this, this thing that you're saying to me, she wasn't supposed to even have dealings with him uh, and talk to one another. That was a division that was, uh, that was there. Can you imagine this? And so uh, she said, yes, I know uh, he, he had come for the lost sheep of Israel, but he told the woman, originally God's plan was to reach out to them, and they were going to go and, and, and reach out to the rest of the world, the disciples, the original disciples, and all of those who were going to believe he was going to go through his children. Uh, the, the, uh, the children of Abraham and evangelize the whole world. That was God's plan. But as you see, the Bible says he came to his own and his own did what? They received him not. He came to his own people uh, there nearly 2,000 years ago and they refused to accept him. And, and, and so as a result, much like today, nothing has changed. They continue to reject him. They continue to think that he has not come yet as we come earlier this week, but he's already come. How many thankful for that today? Amen. Amen. 2,000 years ago, it's already been told that he's already come. He's already gave his life. He's already died for mankind. The Messiah has come. Amen. He's now sitting on the right hand of the Father. Amen. He's interceded for you and I this morning. How many grateful for God this morning? Amen. He's already come today. The Bible tells us how there's a blinder over many women's eyes. He says there's a veil over, over the children of Israel. There's a veil even as we speak. There's a veil they cannot see beyond the veil. They're looking for somebody else to come. But again, and so thank God in the New Testament, after Jesus died, Jesus rent the veil. Amen. Jesus opened up the veil. He opened up the curtain, and now we can see, no doubt, clearly. Amen. But let's get back to where we go. So this woman came up to him and said, hey, I see you doing this for all these other people. Can you do it for me? Yes, he can do it for everybody. Amen. It is intended for everybody here today. You say, well, it's for the brother here. No, it's not just for this brother here, but it's for you. It's for the old, the young, the rich, and the poor. God's love love is for everybody this morning. Amen. Amen. Give God glory this morning. Amen. So this woman said, well, he, he, he began to have an exchange. He began to have an exchange with her. And, 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 and the Bible tells us how he says, uh, he says, that she says, it's only, it's only meant for those uh, for the, those to eat of this table. It's for the, uh, the children of Israel. But she began like a profound statement. She says, well, even the dogs can eat crumbs on the master's table. Amen. And tonight, you know, she used that terminology, but we're more than dogs this morning, man. You are not a dog, amen. Each one of us today, don't let anyone call you out on your name, amen. You are not a dog this morning. We are not dogs this morning. We are children of God this morning. Let's get down where we want to go. And so the Bible began to tell us uh, again, and, and we thank God again for his grace and his mercy. Uh, again, we, uh, we, he began to go back and how back to our main text of where he began to speak to, to uh, Nicodemus, another man. The Bible says Nicodemus, when he came to him by night, he came and began to uh, exchange with him these profound scriptures. He came to him by night to begin to let him know again how that he was now one day come into the world to save the lost mankind. Amen. And so he uh, began to reject him. Let's go back and read some of this. Even when he was dealing with the woman about how he began to deal with sin. He began to deal with sin and how he began to say, hey, he's come to save mankind from their sins. We're going to go on into it today. And so he began to say that condemnation is condemnation. He didn't come to condemn the world. The world is condemned already. Amen. The world is condemned already. And Jesus, no doubt, came. He said, I didn't come to condemn the world. We read over in the Revelation that one day the world will be condemned. One day the world will be judged. One day the world will have to give an account for the soul. He said, I didn't come for that right now. He said, I came to just tell you, no doubt, there's a better way. Thank God for a better way this morning. Amen. There's a better way today. And really, as a preacher and as, a, as Jesus did, and as preachers and as believers today, all we basically do, we have to call out sin sometimes. But all we're trying to do is just say there's a better way. Amen. I told a man one time, I said, we're not judging. We just hold up a stop sign. Amen. The judge is the, uh, the father up in heaven. Amen. Amen. It's like going, if you pass the pass through a red light, red light, if you pass through a red light, amen, it's, it, all, all I'm supposed to do is just hold the stop sign on it. Right? All I am is a stop sign. When you decide to go beyond the stoplight, you're going to get ticketed and have to face the judge. Amen. All I'm doing is just bringing it up. Hey, stop. Hey, don't go that way. Yield. Do not do these things. Amen. Many times people think we're judging, bringing judgment. No, we didn't come to judge. We came to say stop. Amen. 
And it's up to you to uh, heed to the warnings. It's up to us, you and I today, to take heed to the Let me know what I'm talking about this morning. Amen. Because there's a judge that will one day condemn the world. Amen. Today, all we're doing is saying stop. Amen. There's a better way. Because one day we will crash. We will run into things. There, there's just beyond the stoplight. There's an intersection there. And it can cause great calamity if we don't stop. Amen. The Bible says today he came not condemn the world. In John, uh, Mark chapter 7, he says, uh, that which is, is in a man's heart, that's what defiled the man. He went on about adultery. He went on about murders and drunkenness and all these different things. He went on about all these different things. He says, that's not what, uh, those things is what defile a man. And so he, all he came to do was to tell men and women to stop, amen, and come to Almighty God. The Bible goes on and says today, some, again, many times we have to call these things out. is because people don't know. People don't know, amen. They don't know. I remember growing up. I, I, I grew up and thought it was okay, and many times in our lives we think that things are okay. I thought it was okay to get drunk as long I drank as long as I didn't get drunk. And how how well does that play out? Huh? I thought I grew up that way. I said so I heard that doctrine. It's okay to drink, just don't get drunk. Now when is we when is the cutoff limit? You wouldn't want a surgeon uh, having a sip before he drink uh, cuts on you, right? What's the cutoff limit? You want the airplane pilot to get up in the air? Huh? One shot, two shots, three shots, some more. <laughs> but anyway, I thought of, I grew up this way. But again, I thank God. Again, the, my eyes were open. Again, I, 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 I was talking about also immorality or sexual immorality. I thought it was okay as long as we didn't cheat. Right? Thought it was okay as long as we didn't cheat until I read about fornication, until I read about adultery. The reason why I brought that up because again, all we're saying is stop. Amen. He said these are the things that come out of a man. Again, again, we, we thought, again, I thought once I was baptized, everything would be for the rest of my life, it would be that way. But God says we have to come out of that stuff. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so he didn't come. We don't come to the condemn. We just try to let you know that God is saying it's time to stop. Amen. Amen. Let's get back to where we're going to go. There's a misconception. The Bible says here today, brother, if a brother errs from the truth and one converted him from his ways, he says, and lets him know that, uh, again, the sin that he was involved in, he said he will cover a multitude of sins and he will hide a multitude of sins. All we again, many times, God, Jesus came to do was to say, hey, there's a better way. I mean, you know what I'm talking about this morning. There is a better way. Unbelief, no doubt. Unbelief because of man's unbelief, however. They fail to believe in Jesus. They fail to believe in the word of God. And that's what causes uh, uh, unrighteousness to come. And we read about I'm saying all these different things I'm labeling you telling you about this morning. It separates us from God. It separates us from God. And, and so you begin to think about all these nations. We want to tie this into the nations of the world. And how that, again, all these different things we have now are separated from one another. We now have separation because, and divisions because of, of unrighteousness and various things. Uh, between, and it's really a big picture between man and God. I'm trying to go slow so this makes sense to you. Amen. Between man and God, there is a division of sin. And it's almost like putting up a border between us and God. Amen. So I understand that. Sin brings a border between us and God. There is a spiritual disconnect that we've been coming over the week. We pray that again God will begin to reunite and be connected back with God. And we pray today that you, uh, no doubt that does not know him today, or perhaps you've gotten away from God, we can begin to reconnect with Almighty God. Amen. As we've come together to connect this one, we want to connect this one with our Heavenly Father up in heaven. Amen. We want to connect with him today. Amen. And so we see how that many will get disconnected. But we pray today that you will begin to get reconnected with Almighty God. Amen. Again, because it's like being disconnected from the body. The Bible says the church is the body of Christ. Can you imagine being a disconnect, a, 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 a joint or something being disconnected from the body? Amen. But God this morning is trying to reconnect us back to Almighty God. Amen. Over in the book of uh, Genesis, real quick, I'm going to go through a lot today. The book of Genesis, the Bible tells us uh, at one time we were all connected as one. Genesis chapter 10. Genesis chapter 10, the Bible talks about the Tower of Babel. I mean, you heard it before, the Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel, how that we were all connected as one. But the Bible says in Genesis chapter 10, there was one language and one people. We were all one uh, uh, mankind uh, uh, shortly after the flood. Because think about it, it was right after the flood, and Noah was only one family left. So we all come from the same people. Amen. But because of this, they had, the Bible says because of this, and the, the population grew, they began to come find, they began to come up with all these different wild ideas about, again, things in life, and everything under the sun began to happen, much like today. 
And so God split them up. And as the Bible, go back and read Genesis chapter 10. The Bible says how uh, he began to, uh, uh, they wanted to build a great tower and get up to heaven. And God struck the tower down. And all these people became various languages and various things. The Bible says that he began to cut the uh, earth and began to create borders. Why? To separate man. Because when men got together, man did a lot of things. Amen. And so God separated these things. And so we see in our Bible reading here was a reunification back to God. This woman that was at the crumbs, wanted to eat the crumbs off the table, was now going to be reunited back to God. No doubt, again, the world that Jesus came to die for the entire world was going to reunite man as one back to God. Amen. All nations, all kindreds, all creeds. In the Corinthians, the Bible talks about Jesus is our second Adam. Again, we think about it, we all came from that same blood. It does not matter what skin color, what tone, what part of the world we may be from. We all have come from the same man, Adam, right? And so now in the New Testament, the Bible says Jesus was that second Adam. I remember singing that. I was reading about that. Amen. Amen. Jesus was the second Adam. He says, and how that through this, uh, again, the second Adam, Jesus came to break the barriers of division. And through this, we have one common blood that was shed for us. Amen. Back to that again. We have one common blood. Thank God for the common blood this morning. Amen. And that's the blood of Jesus Christ here this morning. And the only thing that will separate a man, us today, is if one is saved and one is not saved this morning. Amen. Today, we want you to begin to come to God and say, you know what? This blood is for you also. Amen. This blood is for you. This blood is for your soul. This blood is for your heart. This blood is for all the entire world to come together. It was intended for all mankind to come back to God. Amen. The Bible says, no doubt, all borders, all people, all kindreds, all creeds, it was made for each one of us. No doubt, again, the prejudices and all these other things, Jesus came to break the barriers down. The Bible says in Psalms 139, 14, he says, I will praise thee because we are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. Marvelous are thy works, and my soul does know this. He said, each one of us are wonderfully made. Amen. It does not matter, again, where you may be from this morning. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. How many know that this morning? Amen. We are made in the image of God. Nobody's bigger. Nobody's better. Amen. It does not matter the skin tone this morning. I'm telling you, our God, no doubt, makes us all the same race. Amen. That's the human race this morning. Amen. We sing a song. We sing a song. She said, all hallelujah belongs to you. Now, sir, I interjected a little bit there. I said, hallelujah is a universal word. Did y'all know that? In every language, hallelujah is the same thing. You can go way down to Spain somewhere. And it'll be the same word. You can go over to Russia and say hallelujah. They would know what you're saying. You can go to Japan and say hallelujah. They would know what the word means. Amen. It is a universal language. Let me get the definition. Hallelujah means to shine light and attention and praise to Almighty God. Amen. It means to shine and Yah. That last prayer, Yah means God. Again, uh, to boast, he says, to make boast to Yah. I'm giving glory to Yah. In other words, uh, our Father, another name for God is Yahweh. Amen. Or Jehovah. Amen. Amen. And so, Yah, I'm giving praise. Hallelujah. Yah, I'm the highest praise to Yah. And so today, that's why we say hallelujah. So every language, every worship nation today, it was intended for all of us to know that common language. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody should give God praise. Man. He says, let everything that have breath do what? Praise the Lord. One common praise, one common praise. The Bible says, whosoever would believe us, that means everybody. Whosoever. How many whosoever's we have in here? We sing a song sometimes, whosoever but me is me. Amen. Whosoever you are, whatsoever you've done, wheresoever you've been, whatsoever's going on in your life. I'm telling you, we said, well, whosoever God this morning, it was intended for you. When he died on the cross, it was intended for me. It was intended for you. Help me think for that this morning. Amen. It was intended for everyone, oh, the white, the black, the red, the brown, the gang member, it does not matter. It was intended for whosoever would believe this morning. Amen. Amen. Bible says today he would that all men was come, it was come to pass that whosoever in Joel and, and Acts, he says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm telling you today, whosoever will call on the name of the Lord. We're talking about whosoever will this morning. Whosoever will call on him. How many gonna call on Jesus this morning? Whosoever will call on that name shall be saved. I challenge this morning to call on the mighty name of Jesus. One man got mad the other day. He, uh, again, he, we have the live stream going. He got mad and made a comment. Again, I kept saying, what's his name? And he kept saying, Jesus. What What's his name? Jesus. They got mad. The man got mad and said, ah, why do you keep next to that name? Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Jesus is that name. And so he says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, and even in the, uh, again, this translates also as Yahweh, it should be named, shall be saved to them. Whosoever means me, again, everyone that walks the face of the earth, living here in New York City, it's a blessing. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. It's awesome, really. Like, really, uh, again, it, it's because we get all in one, one spot. All in one spot. Various neighborhoods. You can go to Little Italy. Right? You can go to Chinatown. You can go to the Polish neighborhood. You can go to the South American neighborhood. Uh, you can pick a neighborhood, the Chile or Ecuador restaurants. and all these, That's a beauty about living in New York City. You can go to the African neighborhood. You can go to a Middle Eastern neighborhood, Jewish neighborhood, European neighborhoods, Russian neighborhoods. All around, it's really a depiction of no doubt what God's, what heaven's going to look like. Amen. Uh, we have the United Nations here. Some love it, some hate it. But everyone is welcome is what it was saying when it was established. Everyone was welcome. Many of you came to this country, chased after the American dream. It was a way in which a man was to come into one place to pursue, as Thomas Jefferson said, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The United Nations, they'll be meeting in a couple of weeks. It's considered sovereign territory. You may have heard through the years, dictators have shown up. A minute I showed up, he was cursing death, death to America and all these other things. He's allowed to go and step his foot in to the United Nations. It's a sovereign territory. World dictators, world leaders, kings of all kings and presidents are able to go whosoever will. Again, America is considered a place where men and women are welcome. As we say today, this is what it, uh, the quote of Thomas, I'm quoting properly. The Bible says, if we hold these truths to be evident that all men are created equal. Take you back to school. Let's read it again. He said that we hold these truths and self-evident that all men are created equal. They have been, are endowed by the creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That was the Declaration of Independence written. It pointed to the creator. It pointed to our God up in heaven. That no doubt we came to a place where, again, where men and women could come and, and experience that. We know there's a lot of black eyes in the history. We know there's a lot of things wrong. But again, there's nothing like this place. Amen. How many thank for this, for this place? Amen. 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 Again, in the day, we know that we have a lot of still issues to go. And again, if we don't get to God, there will be more issues multiplied. Amen. Amen. But today, we come to a place where God brings liberty. And no doubt where the Spirit of the Lord is here today, church, there is liberty. Amen. Amen. The liberty of Almighty God today as we want to point it to ultimately it is a beacon to, uh, to the it was a beacon to the rest of the world amen a gate place no doubt to come and, and live no doubt and so we thank God for that but most importantly we thank God for a place where you can come today to the house of the Lord amen when Jesus came he says that whosoever will believe on me do I will not perish today whosoever today is what I'm going to bring you back to today every man and woman boy and girl back to what I was saying in New York City we have I have Hispanic friends Russian friends a Russian friend I work with, and the fella, man, he loves me. He, he say, hey, 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 how's your daughters? How's your wife? And he'll bring a bunch of candy, Russian candy, and drop it off to me. Say, hey, here's for your daughters. Because why we don't see color? Amen? Amen. Amen. I said we don't see color. Amen. European friends, Asian friends, African friends, there should be no way you can be out of the presence in this city. Come on. Talk about whosoever will. Whosoever believeth in him, no doubt, uh, again, uh, again, we thank God of men, women, and women, Caribbean friends, African friends, Middle Eastern friends. I have a Caribbean wife, amen. A blessing to have. And so we see growing up again here today, it's hard to embrace these things. It's hard to show new ways. But Jesus began to show us the new way, amen. I grew up in the, grew up in the South, so it was hard. Black and white issues, no doubt. But thank God for the barriers that were broken through Jesus Christ, amen. I said, Jesus breaks down barriers, today. There should not be any barriers but separate man against one another, amen. That's what man does. That's what the devil does. The Bible says he wants to sift men and women like we. That's why we have wars, but we are all of the same people, believe it or not. Is everybody follow so that's what this uh, International Day is all about. It's for whosoever will. You see, when we come to in heaven, the Bible says, I see men from all walks of life. Every nation, every kindred, every creed, every walk of life today to break down the barriers. And the most important barrier is that separation between God. The separation of sin, the break it apart to men, men and women come to God. The disconnect now has been broken because of Jesus today, amen. The disconnect between God and man is now broken. Again, uh, the, uh, the uh, things are uh, no doubt we have separated by languages and borders, but there is, again, is one common thing that unites us, that's the cross of Calvary today, man. The cross of Calvary today, the blood of Almighty God today, man. The Creator today, the Bible says in Ephesians.
Ephesians 4, 3 through 6, 4, 3 through 6, he says, endeavor to bring unity and peace and bond. He says, there is one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and the Father of all, and above all and through all in you all. He began to let us know there's one, his son Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life is what he says, and no man cometh to the Father but what? Through him. Through him, the Bible also tells us there's one mediator between God and man, the mediator, the man Christ Jesus. There's one go between that we have to go to to get to God, amen? And that was the Son of God, Jesus Christ, today, amen? No doubt the mediator, the man Christ Jesus, the king, and all kings will bow to him one day. Every king that's in the United Nations will have to bow. Everyone, no doubt, they're going grappling for peace. They're next week, they'll be looking for peace. They're trying to find plans. They have summits trying to find peace. They have agendas and all these different things trying to make unite the world together. But I'm telling you, the only thing that can reunite the world is God today. Amen. Unite, we, we got to get back to God. Amen. That's right. To get back to God is what That's unites right. our world today. Unity comes from God. In 1 Timothy, the Bible says, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications and prayers and intercessions be made for all men, for kings and for those in authority. Again, today, for the kings and those in authority, all men. God needs some people that's going to call upon the name of the Lord for our, our people in authority. Amen. So they can get back to God. Back to where we see today, we need some godly leaders. Amen. In yes. church today, we are the ones that call upon them. Again, we see God is looking for people to pray. Pray for those in authority. I like with the book of David, come to the book of Daniel. Like, stay with me, folks. Amen. We'll keep going in a minute. Come on. Take your time. In the book of Daniel, the Bible says that Daniel prayed. He would pray three times a day. Morning, noon, and day. And the purpose of him praying, because he was the spirit, was the only answer. And the king, no doubt that he was underneath, he realized this. He realized the power of prayer through Daniel. And he made a declaration that all nations, no doubt, need to bow down and worship the God of Daniel. Because he knew the power of God. He said all men should be saved. God's desire is that all would come to God. That all would come to the knowledge of the truth. Again today, the meeting is between man and God, the man Christ Jesus. He is truth today. We thank God for the truth today. He said, I would that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. When Jesus comes in, you can lift up holy hands to our Father and say hallelujah to God, man and God today. You can give him praise. Why? Again, because of what he's done. We instructed to pray everywhere. It doesn't matter what color, what country. Pray. Pray to the Lord. Healing comes through prayer. He said, if my people would call by my name, will humble themselves and just pray. And seek my face. And turn from their wicked ways. He said, then, and repent of their sin. He says, then I will hear from heaven. And I will heal the land. Today we see shootings and murders and all these different things in the news today. But God needs some people to pray. Let me believe it this morning. He said, if I need some people that will pray, if I can get a group of people that will call upon the living God, no doubt I can heal the land. Amen. I truly believe there were some people praying for Florida. Amen. And God, it's amazing how God can turn a, a, a hurricane around. Amen. Men, God today, men and women today, God can move with the power of prayer. God can do things today. And I believe our nation can be healed and our people can be healed through the power of prayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Through the power of prayer. Salvation comes through prayer. And the world is lost because there's a disconnect. But Jesus came to reconnect. Jesus said that God didn't come to condemn the world. The world is condemned already. He said, I come to save the world. He says, he loved the world and whosoever believed in him shall not perish. He loved his creation, his offspring, that nobody would perish. But all men would come to repentance. People are crying. He says he came for those that were crying. The children of Israel were crying for their Messiah. As the Old Testament closed out, the children of Israel cried and they cried and they cried, praying for the Messiah to come. They were praying for the Messiah if he would come. And he came, he showed up through the virgin birth. No doubt he came for the world, he came to save the lost. He came, whosoever would believe the creation, the offspring of God. Jesus heard their cry. And Jesus can hear your cry this morning. Wherever you may be right now, Jesus can hear your cry. Amen. Jesus can hear your prayer this morning. If he would just crawl out to him, he's wanting to reunite you back to the Heavenly Father. 
whosoever would come today, he said, and believe. Don't doubt it. There's a unification that takes place. That's why he came. People knew that he was God. Nicodemus, no doubt, didn't realize this. He told Nicodemus the greatest statement of all, you must be born again. You must be born again. Nicodemus can fathom it. He can understand it. He says, you are a leader, a world leader, and you're missing it. We've been covering, we've been covering about how the wise, the Bible says the wise miss it. Again, the, the, sometimes the noble, he says, not many noble are called. The educated one, quote unquote, educated, miss the simplicity of God many times. As we share what he says, he told him, it was in verse 8, he says, the wind bloweth where it listens. Heard me say it earlier. The wind bloweth where it listens. The wind is blowing right now, and the scientists are looking at this hurricane passing by. But they cannot see God, the simplicity of God. Man will look to the stars up in heaven and look at Jupiter and Mars and all these things, but they miss God. They get more deeper into the simplicity of God. He says they cannot discern it. So Nicodemus, an educated man, a ruler of the Jews, the Bible says he missed God. He says, how can this be? He missed the whole point. The Bible goes on and says how he, he missed the whole point of it all. But the Bible says because of the foolishness of God is wiser than men, the weaker things of God are stronger than men. He says, and how they, no doubt they miss. He confines the wise with the foolishness of God. The very small things of God can find men today. Let's get, I'm going to move on. The Bible says in John chapter 3, 12, he said, I've, you've heard earthly things, yet you believe not. He said, I, I cannot tell you heavenly things today. The earthly things, no doubt, man cannot comprehend. But this morning, I pray that you comprehend the love of Christ this morning. The love of Christ that gave his life for you. If you don't get anything out of this, else out of this, the love of God. Mankind will begin to understand the power of God and the gift of salvation. Jesus came down from heaven, the Bible says. As he told us in verse 13, he said, the bread came down from heaven. He referred to, back to an old statement, Old Testament story about Moses. The Bible says they escaped the, Egypt, the bondage of Egypt. And they were trying to go to be free. The Bible says out in the wilderness, people began to murmur and complain. They begin to complain to God. God had done a great mighty work we covered last week. He opened up the Red Sea. And they missed God. The Bible says he did all these different miracles and they missed it. And as they were out here in the middle of the desert, they begin to murmur and complain and, and, and say, Moses, why'd you bring us out? He should have took us back. We want to go back. We want to go back to our way was worshiping strange gods and all these different things. They were worshiping the gods of Egypt. They were worshiping strange gods and all these different things. And, and the Bible says that God got angry because they worshiped the wrong God. God gets angry. He gets jealous. He's a jealous God, the Bible oh, yes. says. Oh, yes. They worship false gods. And so the Bible says that he played, he sent down uh, snakes from heaven. He sent down snakes, fiery snakes. And can you imagine sitting in here and all these snakes begin to bite the people and kill them? And no doubt Moses went to God and said, what are we going to do? He says, Moses, I want you to lift up the serpent. He says, take a, take a brass iron and take a brass snake. He made an image. You ever seen the uh, um, the ambulances or the medical thing now? They have a, a post with a snake wrapped around it. This is where this comes from. Next time you look at an ambulance or a medical thing, you'll understand this verse. You ever seen it before? Yeah. The, the symbol of, of a people. Say with me, folks. Yes. A little priest this morning. So the Bible says here in verse 14, so the Bible says that Moses, he told him, Moses, when you go up and lift up that rod, the people to see the rod and see that, that image, no doubt the snakes, they, they, would, they, uh, they would be cured. And not only that, but they, uh, they would be prevented from being bitten, long story short. But here in the New Testament, John chapter 3, 14, the Bible says he told Nicodemus, because they understood the Old Testament law, these rulers, they understood the Old Testament law. He bring in, take him back to that story. He says, Moses, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, this is John 3, 14, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That snake that he ripped, lifted up in the wilderness, Moses did, it was to prevent them from being bitten. He says, but now the Son of God is going to be lifted up on the cross. How are you listening? You folks, Amen. He's going to lift him up on the cross. He says, if I be lifted up from the earth on the cross, I will do what? I will draw all men unto me. I will draw all men. And so he says, now 
around Jesus, we covered last week about Jesus is the deliverer. No, he was the ultimate deliverer when he's lifted up on the cross and died for our sins. Let me thank you for what Jesus died on the cross for us. Amen. He died on the cross to take away our sins, and now we can escape the snake bite. We can escape the snake bite. We can escape the snake bitten uh, uh, of sin today. We can escape the snake bit because Jesus has come and gave his life for us today. Amen. It was a protection for all men that will look to him today and see Jesus and look to the Lord. How many going to look to Jesus' name? It protects and it reunites man. It's a protection. It's the blessing of God. It's the entrance into the salvation today. Amen. Yes. He said if man, he says if Moses lift up the serpent so shall the son of man be lifted up. Again people are snake bitten. They're snake bitten. But salvation come from the true deliverer. So now we said last week about Moses was a type of deliverer. But now he was pointing to Jesus deliverance this morning. God can deliver this morning, man. God can deliver the entire world. Jesus can deliver the whole world. That's why he said God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten wide to deliver the entire world. I don't care where you are right now. God can deliver this morning. Let me thank for that this morning. God can deliver this morning for the white, the black, the yellow, brown. Our God can deliver for whosoever will. All these flags, all the nations of the world today. He said for whosoever will believe today, whosoever will bleed today shall not perish but have everlasting life this morning, man. Do we believe this morning? Yeah. Do we believe this morning? Amen. Yeah. Faith in Christ. I give my life to Christ. He said he's the only one that can I give eternal life. Amen. All the other gods, he told him over in the Old Testament, he says, don't trust in strange gods. Those gods were man-made. Our world is so full of man-made gods. Yeah. Stay with me, folks. I'm going to let you down. I told you I binge watch everything else. Stay with me for a minute. You stepping in on my binge watching time preaching. Hang on there. But again, he says it today how that um, they, they, he, he wanted them to, he said, I am your God. Yeah. I am the God, Jehovah, Yahweh. I am he. You don't need other gods. There are gods under the sun. Hey, man, every god under you can have a moon gods. They have sun gods. They have grasshopper gods. They have bear gods. They have every god under the sun. You put the god, you can make a god out of his iPod. <laughs> really, that's what happens anyway. You can make a god out of a computer today. And that's what's happening. They becoming computer becomes people's god. And why? Because you worship that more than you worship God. You spend more time with that than you do God. Free. Your job can become a god. Come on. I say your job can become a god. Money can become a god. Right? Your car can become a god. Clothing can become a god. Everything under the sun can become a god. But there's only one god up in heaven this morning. Amen. Amen. He said, put away your strange gods this morning. There is only one true and living God. And so we look to the God of heaven this morning, the one who gave his life. Because he said he gives eternal life. Everything else is dead. God is dead. He's not coming back. I know it's I told you I try to be nice. But he's not. He's not. He's not. Mom is dead. He's not. Every the Bible says, if you believe the Bible, every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess. Ooh. Not Buddha, not Muhammad, but Jesus, the United. See, man, mankind got mad. They got mad and said, you know, I'm going to start doing it my own way. So all these other things came. The Bible says man is wise in his own eyes. I mean, I'm talking about it. But he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. Amen. And so we go back to what we say today. Jesus is Lord. How many going to believe that with us? Jesus is Lord. He said, whosoever believeth in me shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17 says, God sent not his son to, into the world to condemn the world. Again, we're not condemning. We just raise up awareness. Amen. We're raising awareness. The Bible says, God is a judge. He says, but though he says that he might be saved, he that believeth on me is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Amen. This is a combination. The light is coming to the world and darkness, and they, but they love darkness rather than light. Jesus is the light of the world. Amen. How many believe today? Jesus is the light of the world. And we say today, he lights up a heart. He lights up your soul. Today, perhaps you're in darkness. Today, God can light up your day today. Amen. God is a light to the soul. He's enlightened. I thank God for enlightening me one day and say, you know what? I'm on my way to hell. But Jesus Christ, through his love today, came and gave his life for me. Amen. Thank God for the light of the world. When my days were dark, church today, he gave his life for me. But I didn't know which way to go. He pointed me to the light. He is the light, the joy of the world. Again, today, come to the light today. He says, whoso believeth in me will not perish today. Thank God he gives you a light in a darkened world. A world that's on my way to hell today. But God, through his love and his mercy, brought me out of a miry clay and said, you can be saved today. Thank God for salvation this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Whoso believeth in him shall not perish. But we have everything in life. How many look forward to going to heaven? Amen. Amen. 
Heaven, the Bible says, is for all that will believe. In the Revelation 20 says here, he saw a place far and great, men and women from all walks of life, rich and poor. He said, he said, there will be no more tears, no more crying, no more pain. Jesus came and made that available for us. The one day we'll be with him forevermore. One day we'll, have, we'll be with him. He goes on to say how there are others who will not make it. But today, church, we want to, you want to sure they make it today. And the, and the gates, no doubt, that into heaven is for whosoever will believe this morning. It's for, how many thank you for that today? Whosoever. Amen. Whatever we've done. Man, I've done some things in my parents. Oh, man, I'll be so embarrassed to say. But thank God for salvation. Yes, Lord. Thank God for saving me. Yes, Lord. No doubt you have things in your life that you've done that you're ashamed of, but God's blood saves us. Oh, there's so many crimes and things done in our world today, but the blood, yes. the blood, come on up, Sister Mary, the blood, yes. the blood of Jesus yes. today, yes. oh, it reaches down to the highest of mountains, it can go way up into the Himalayas right down and save those up in the Himalayas, it can go down to the deep, deep uh, uh, jungles of, uh, of Brazil, it can go over to the far unreachable uh, 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 islands, and it goes down into the depths of Alaska and the coldness and, and, and of Iceland. It can reach all the way and down into the villages of Africa, church, amen. It can go throughout all the regions. They, it can go down into the neighborhoods. It goes right down through the cities, every city, every block. The blood never loses its power this morning. Let me thank for that today, amen. Come on, stand to your feet this morning. The blood is for whosoever will today. Salvation is for whosoever will today. And I'm telling you today, there's nothing that you've ever done that the blood cannot forgive of this morning. There's nothing that's that God cannot wash you away from. There's nothing today that God will not forgive you of this morning. Thank God for the blood of the Lamb this morning. Amen. We pray today that you will receive the blood, that you will let the blood be applied. It's for whosoever will this morning. It's for whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord. How are we going to call upon Jesus this morning? Call upon Jesus this morning. He will save you. He will deliver you. He will help you. No doubt that's the only one that can help us today. The blood of Almighty Jesus say, Whosoever believeth in me should not perish, but have everlasting life. Today, from this day forward, for the rest of your life, God will be with you. Amen. That's a blessing to know, Jesus. Amen. No doubt the separation now can be broken. The love of Christ has now come and been shed abroad in all of the world. The Bible says he's a mediator. Yes, Lord. The mediator. The Bible also calls him a counselor as we finish. As I mentioned before, we broke laws. We break laws. The law of sin. Can you imagine standing before the judge? Standing before our Heavenly Father. If you've ever been to court before, you know the feeling. You have to stand before the judge wondering what he's going to say. And there's a lawyer that, step that represents you. and No doubt he'll plead his case for you. And that word mediator means lawyer, counselor. And Jesus was our counselor. How many thank you for Jesus? Before the Father up in heaven, he says, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. All they've done. Can you give them a clean slate? How many want a clean slate this morning? It's for whatever you've done, whosoever and whatever you've done, whosoever you've been with, whatsoever you've gone, whatsoever you may have committed, that's the love of Christ this morning. And it's for whosoever will. It's intended for everybody. He says, uh, Mr. Judge, can you please forgive him? I'll take the sentence. The Bible says he took the sentence for us. Yes. He took the sentence. Can you imagine that lawyer taking his suit coat off? Taking his suit coat off and now saying, take me instead. Here, you, as a matter of fact, you take the keys to my Porsche. <laughs> you can have my, you can, as a matter of fact, take the keys to my apartment and my condo. The more than likely, I got a condo and a Porsche. Them lawyers, right? And I'll go in your place. And that's what Jesus, on a far greater scale, Jesus came and took our place and went to hell for us. He went down and gave his life for us. But thank God he didn't stay there, amen. But he rose again. He rose again. I'm grateful for that. He rose again. He rose and got back up. And no doubt he got back up to show the world and show the devil who was boss, amen. amen. We serve a God today. If you will believe in the victorious God, the God that rose. And today, if you're down in your life, Jesus can pick you up this morning. He can rise. Amen. Jesus wants to reach down where you at and pick you up and dust you off and clean you up. And say so you can come. The altar prayers up as we bow hands and represent God today. If you're not saved today, come on, come on. Whosoever will.
Lift that hand today. Say, I want to be saved this morning, preacher. God bless that hand. We see you. We see you. We see you. All hands bow in the reverence of God. God bless that hand. God bless that hand. We see you. Come on to this altar today. If you got your hand lifted up, come on. Come on. Bring your family. Come on. Come on. This is an important time. Don't be ashamed. Come on. Whosoever will, let the world know. Amen. I'm coming to Christ today. I am coming to Jesus. I am coming to the Lord. I am coming to Jesus this morning. Amen. He says, whosoever believeth in me shall not perish. Come on. Come on. Come on. But have everlasting life today. Amen. Sister, we like to get a chance. Come on, come on, come on. Amen. We thank God today for his goodness. Whosoever believeth in him, if you have a need today, whosoever will, there's a need needed today. If you have needs, come, 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 come. It's for whoever. It's for whoever. I need a touch. I need a miracle preacher. Come on, it's for whosoever. It's intended for everybody. I need healing. I, I need a blessing preacher. Come on, it's for whosoever. I need a door to open up preacher. Come on, it's for whosoever. I need a way made in my life. I need a door to open up, preacher. Who's for whosoever? I need my family to be put back together. It's for whosoever. Hey, man, I need to uh, see this thing broken, these chains. I've been locked up, preacher. Chains are piling up. Whosoever, God can break the chains this morning. I'm sick in my body, preacher. It's for whosoever. I need a way, God. God, please make a way. Come on, it's for whosoever. He says, whosoever believe it in me. Whosoever believe it in me. Today will not be able to have everlasting life. I don't care what it is right now. Give it to Jesus. The Bible says, cash that cares upon him for he carried for you this morning. He cares enough to care. He gave his life. It was for whosoever will. He can hear your cry this morning. As we look to God in prayer this morning. Let's call on God today. Saints, begin to pray. Begin to pray, saints. Begin to call on God. Whoever you may be. Young, old, rich or poor. Young and old today. He can hear your prayer. God bless you.